I'm Dakota with Waldemar Design and Machine and today I want to talk to you about the 310 series. We're going to look at the features, what makes it a 310 series, who the user of a 310 series is, what are the controls and the control options, and then what is the rolling procedure with a 310 series. Alright, let's get started with the features. What makes it a 310 series? Well, the most obvious is the roll configuration. So it is a three roll machine and it's in an initial pinch configuration with the top roll and the pinch roll being directly above and below each other and then just having one bending roll. So three roll initial pinch configuration. It is also an all electric design, which is great. Um, it eliminates a lot of maintenance, no hydraulic hose leaks, no oil filter changes, um, no cylinders that are leaking down. Um, so it's very robust in that respect as well. And it also um, boasts a swing out top roll. So instead of having a drop in plate, um, these are slightly lighter machines. And so they have a swing out top roll that works fantastic for this application. And it just has a latch handle that has actually been redesigned and can now be unlatched under load which is great. So who is the user, the end user, that benefits from this style of machine? So this is a great series for, you know, a job shop or somebody with, you know, low volume that's not either rolling a lot or they're doing a lot of one-offs. Like, you know, they have every part they do is different from the part they just rolled. It's not like they're set up for production. Or it can also actually be a great option for like say the HVAC industry to where maybe they want to just keep running things through and they're not concerned about extremely precise um, cylinders and leading flat, a flat on the leading and trailing edge um, and they run it through without doing a pre bend So we're going to get into all that in the rolling procedure. First off now for the controls. What are the control options for the 310 series? So it comes standard with a foot switch for forward and reverse roll rotation. So you can control that easily with your foot. And then for the pinch roll, it moves up and down with a hand wheel on either side of the roll. So that you can adjust for pinch trim as well, which we'll get into in a different video when talking about cone rolling. And then for the bending roll, it comes standard with a hand wheel adjustment for that as well that raises and lowers the bending roll. Um, now, however, you can get upgraded options to these. Um, you can get a power bending adjustment. Um, so the, the, the bending roll moves up and down at a push button that's mounted on the electrical box enclosure. And also for the bending roll, it comes standard with a mechanical readout. And you can upgrade for an electric digital readout with a cup counter etc as an option and if you don't like the foot switch etc we can upgrade to a rolling pedestal for your control options as well would be um, something you could look at and contact us about so now with all that said let's look into the the meat of the situation and let's look at the rolling procedure how do you roll correctly with an initial pinch style roll so we're gonna start off here. You're gonna to want to adjust the pinch roll for your material thickness. So you've got a hand wheel on either side. You want to grip the material with enough pressure that it grips and pulls the material to, through, but not an excessive amount of pinch pressure. So as, as little as you can get by with, it kind of depends on your material thickness, et cetera, how tight you grip the material, but you'll soon get a feel for that. Once the pinch roll is adjusted, um, you're going to go to the back side of the machine actually and perform a pre-bend. So insert your material workpiece into the starting groove in the pinch roll here. That's going to square your part. So you want to square your material against the starting groove. 
once it is in that groove, you can raise the bending roll to achieve the desired diameter that you need and look at the mechanical readout or the electric digital readout to find your number that you're looking for. So you raise it, the bending roll, and now you are going to use the foot switch and actually roll it in reverse because remember we're on the back side of the machine. So roll your workpiece through in reverse creating a pre-bend. This eliminates the flat on the leading and trailing edges. By doing a pre-bend you get one and a half to two times the material thickness is all the flat you'll get. So roll it through um, to create just a little bit to create a pre-bend on the leading edge. Now you want to take your workpiece out. You don't want to roll it entirely in this method because it rolls at more accurately and better if you are pushing your material against the roll instead of just doing the bend first and then going through the pinch roll, if that makes sense. So that's why the pre-bend is only a short period. Now take your workpiece out, bring it around to the front side of the machine, the normal operating side, and you are going to the pre-bend side, the side you just bent, you're going to lift it up and insert that leading edge there into the starting groove once again. And we've got to make sure this part's square or it will corkscrew. So make sure it starts square in that starting groove. And now you're going to, you don't have to adjust the pinch roll anymore because it's already adjusted as you had it set before. Now you're going to roll it through until it hits the bending roll. Now, go around and you're going to need to raise the bending roll a little bit because it rolls, well for one, for a couple reasons. One says after you rolled it the first time of spring back, it opened up a little bit. So, you gotta roll it a little tighter than the diameter you actually achieved. So, you need to bring up that pre-bend a little bit and plus it rolls different when you're pushing against the roll. Um, the way you're normally supposed to, so it also needs to be slightly higher in this position. So, now that we've got that understood, um, set it to the position you need it to, and then continue cycling through, and you need to roll it slightly tighter than the diameter you want to achieve, again, because spring back, how much is it going to open up when you take the pressure off the rolls? So whenever it's coming back around, you wanna make sure you prevent it from re-rolling and letting the second layer go under. So you either, if it's lighter material, you can hold it back with your hands or with an overhead crane, or we also offer an overhead support option as well. And then uh, basically, once the part is rolled, you just push up on the latch handle to release it while it's still under load. You do not have to lower the pinch roll. Um, you can just push up the latch handle, swing open the top roll and slide your workpiece off and voila, you're good to go. So hopefully that explained the standard rolling procedure for the initial pinch machines. And this is good for the K series too, which also has the drop in plate. Slightly different with that, but the rolling procedure is the same on any initial pinch plate roll. To achieve the most concentric part that you can with minimal flats on the leading and trailing edges. I would also like to point out that whenever you're learning to roll a new part, it is always easier to start bigger and get smaller. So you can just keep re-rolling the piece and working it to a smaller and smaller diameter. Just make sure each time that you insert your work piece that you square it in the squaring groove and just keep adjusting the bending roll up and you will be good to go and getting a perfect cylinder. Uh, one tip with that though is whenever you are re-rolling a piece, you can switch the leading and trailing edge. So the leading edge this time will be the trailing edge next time. Um, helps get a more concentric part. I would also like to give another piece of advice when rolling, do not let your metal come out the other end of the roll. In other words, don't let it feed the whole way through to where the rolls snap back together and make a popping sound. Make sure you keep an eye on your material and right before it goes out, stop rolling and lift the latch handle up and release the pressure off. That will help the longevity of your bearings. It's really hard on the machine to let um, the rolls snap back together when the material comes out. The other end so just another tip there i would like to sh uh, give a shout out to valley welding which is a local job shop for letting us use their plate roll as a demonstration today 
The roll used in this video is a 310 660, which has a six inch diameter top roll and a five foot working length and has a pre-bend capacity of quarter by five foot to a 24 inch diameter. Uh, the 310 series comes in a range of sizes, so feel free to reach out to us. We can help you with your project. Reach out to us online at our website, give us a phone call, um, and yeah, happy plate rolling.